You won't believe what this bear grabbed. I've got wildlife expert Casey Dukes here to help me figure it out. Showcasing North Carolina's candid critters. From the Museum of Natural Sciences, it's You Won't Believe with Roland Caves. We highlight the craziest pictures from North Carolina candid critters, a citizen science project where volunteers like you help us run camera traps across the state, see wildlife, and do science. Today, I've got Casey Dukes, a wildlife biologist from the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, here to help me figure out what's going on with this crazy picture. Welcome, Casey. Glad to be here. All right, so check it out. This is a bear picture, and what does he have in his mouth? Well, it looks like he's got a deer in his mouth. That's not even a little fawn. That looks like a full-sized deer. It does look like an adult deer or a young adult deer. Um, you know, most people would look at this picture and say, man, that bear killed that deer. Um, but I look at that picture and say that bear probably picked up that deer that was already dead or scavenged that deer. So what makes you think that this bear uh, didn't kill the deer and just picked it up? Well, with black bears, we don't really see the predatory behaviors that we typically think in like a grizzly bear or a brown bear. Um, so most of their diet is plant-based actually. And then below that we have insects. And then uh, sometimes we see small mammals or you know mammals of this size, but typically we don't see that predatory behavior. So they'll usually take what they can get. So they're opportunistic omnivores. So they, they will get whatever's around, but not necessarily chase or prey on other species most of the time. I see. And so what about, what about say, what if this was a fawn and a bear? Then what would you think? So occasionally you do see a bear going after a fawn in the spring. Fawns are much more vulnerable. They're really just bedded down. If they happen upon them, then yes, we do see fawn and scat a bear. But um, that's, that's pretty rare, and it's not something that they're necessarily seeking out. Okay, so, so bear and deer normally would sort of coexist peacefully in the uh, forest of North Carolina? Yeah, absolutely. So um, especially on the coast, when bear and deer are into cornfields, we'll see them you know, in the same field. Um, so they can be in the same area. I've seen pictures on, on bait piles with the same type of situation where they're in the area together. So they're not necessarily afraid of each other all the time or going after each other all Have the time. Have you seen them actually literally in the same picture at the same time? Yes. Not really? Yeah. And the deer are not like freaked out and the bear is not jumping on the deer? I mean, they're usually not right next to each other okay. eating, maybe in the background or right in front, but it does wow. happen. Wow, that's interesting. All right, so we've got another picture from our, uh, one of our volunteers of a bear with something else somewhat unusual in its mouth. Tell me uh, what's going on in this picture. Looks like that bear has some trash. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, this is a scene that um, we see pretty often and we get a lot of calls about. Okay, so the bear has raided someone's garbage can. Yes. Um, so right now or in the fall seasons, uh, bears go what's, through what's called hyperphagia. Hyperphagia. Which, hyperphagia. So you think about those words, hyper, very, very active, and phagia, eating of a certain resource, oh, I, right? I go through that sometimes. <laughs> Um, but bears go through this to prepare for hibernation or at least for a low activity state that they remain in through the winter. Um, and so they, if, if they can't find berries, if they can't find acorns, um, if they're not finding the food sources that they typically get, or if they can find an easier meal than what they typically get, they'll start getting into trash if it's available to them. So, uh, so a bear with the garbage in his mouth, is this a problem for us? Is it a problem for the bears? Yeah, it's a problem for both. Um, so we see this, this activity quite a bit. And what happens is when bears start uh, associating humans with food and getting food from humans, they start becoming more comfortable. And that's when we run into problems like bear-human interactions I've and conflicts. I've heard some crazy things about like bears breaking into houses or breaking into cars and things like that, looking for food. Yeah, there's always stories about that. Bears, um, they can, their sense of smell is incredible. And so if they can smell food in a house, or um, in a car sometimes, and this is really, really habituated animals that are doing this, not the first time that yeah, they've Yeah, right, right, but that's what this. you want to try to avoid, right? They yeah. eat it once, and they get the taste for it, and then they come back for it. Is there any sort of uh, guides for how we can keep bears from getting our food? Yeah, absolutely. So bearwise.org is a new program. It's sponsored by the Southeastern Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, which is a mouthful. Um, but it's a great resource throughout the Southeast to um, learn how to stash your trash, to get rid of attractants for bears, and to prevent conflicts from happening in the future and to coexist peacefully with bears. Yeah. I see. And so are these bears that are, are coming from the sort of deep dark woods and invading into the cities and then moving back, or are they living in the cities and actually getting this food? 
Um, well, it, it depends. Um, there's a really cool project going on right now, the Asheville Bear Project, which you can check out on Facebook, um, where they're studying that exact thing. So uh, trying to see if bears are living in cities or are getting resources and moving out. And um, I think they're I'm not sure of the results, but I think they're finding a little bit of both. Okay. Well, that's definitely the trashiest bear I've ever seen. Casey, thanks so much for joining us, and thanks everybody online for joining us today. And remember, if you're in the state, go to the North Carolina Candid Critters website to sign up and join us. Become a citizen scientist. Help us run camera traps across the state. I'm Roland Kays. See wildlife. Do science.